Mr. Andrew Reddy, what did you come up with for your integral? 1 over n plus 1 times x to the n plus 1. Plus c. Say it again. Plus c. Okay. Plus c. Plus c. How many of you have 1 over n plus 1 times x to the n plus 1 power plus c? Raise your hand. Oh, okay. Uh, it's very close to what I have. I have the exact same thing out, uh, except slightly simplified. So let's write down what it is. The integral of x to the nth power with respect to x is x to the n plus 1 power all divided by n plus 1 plus the constant c. Don't forget, c can be positive or negative. It doesn't matter if I change the sign uh, there. I could even write this with a minus c if I wanted to. It wouldn't matter because the constant c can be a negative 2 or a positive 2. It doesn't, doesn't matter. So this kind of gives you a, an idea of how you, you're going to take integrals. Um, these are called indefinite integrals because we're not defining uh, from where to where we are integrating. We're, we're not saying we're going to integrate only from 1 to 10. We're not saying we're integrating from 0 to 20 or from 0 to pi over 6, which will happen in a little bit later. Um, this is an indefinite integral because it's not defined. It's indefinite. Indefinite. Indefinite means that there's nothing here. It is not defined. We're not specifying. In section four, we're going to do definite integrals. So right now, these are called indefinite integrals. And this is the rule that you should be using to find integrals as the opposite of the power rule. The easiest thing that I do to remember this is I just remember it's the backwards, it's the opposite of taking a derivative. So if I'm looking at the one above it, let's, let me scroll down back again. This is x plus 1. So if I'm taking the integral of this, I would be adding 1, which is 2. And then I'm dividing by that same number. See how this is n plus 1? I'm dividing by the same number that you get. So I'm dividing by 2. What was 10 divided by 2? It was 5. That's the easiest way for me to do it. And as a little trick, as I'm taking the integral of 10x, I get this 5x squared. When I see integral of dx, I just kind of remember that don't forget the constant plus c. I like to try to think of it as the integral of dx is the constant c. It's not really, but it helps me not forget this piece because you have to have the plus c. It's kind of like when we were, um, took the derivative with respect to y, you had to have dy dx as a part of your problem, as part of your answer. Same thing goes with this. OK, uh, do you need another example? Or are you guys ready for the harder stuff? stuff. Wonderful. That's exactly what I thought. So, let's do a couple of harder stuff things, okay? Harder stuff number one. Let me recenter a little bit, please. There we go. Ooh, I like your thinking, whoever said that. I think that was Cody. It's just there 
to let you know what your variable is. You're taking the integral with respect to x. Just like the f of x sort of thing? It's kind of like an, well, maybe, maybe. Is there going to be like implicit anti-differential? We're not going to get into that. But actually, if there's, if there's anything you can do with a derivative, there's a way to do it with an integral. Because they are inverses of each other. Okay? All right. Now, as far as these go, we're going to go and do these problems one at a time. And let me remind you several little things that you might be unclear on when you did the Chapter 2 test. If you were taking the derivative of the first one, if I was taking the derivative of this, I have a variable multiplying another variable. You would have to do something called the product rule. Okay. Now, way back in chapter two, section two, I showed you that there was a way to get around the product rule. You don't have to do the product rule if you have it simplified. So I am not going to teach you any product rules. I'm not going to teach you uh, any product rules or quotient rules or chain rules of integrals. Okay? Everything we do in these two sections, I am expecting you to simplify before you take the integral. That's what you're going to do. I'm expecting you to simplify. So, I have a product right now. You need to simplify this before you take the integral. What does that mean? That means that before I take the integral, I need to have this as x times x to the one half power with respect to x. Right? I can change this from radical form into exponential form. And since I'm multiplying two things with the same base, I can do what with my exponents? And what is one plus a half? Okay, and have I taken the derivative of the integral yet? I'm sorry, the integral? No, so right now it's still x to the three halves with respect to x. So do you notice that I haven't gotten rid of this integral sign or this antiderivative sign? That's what that means, the antiderivative or the integral of. And my rule states I add 1 to this exponent. Adding 1 is 2 halves to the 3 halves, and I get x to the 5 halves. And I divide by same number. 5 halves. Can I leave my answer? Oh, and am I forgetting something? What's the integral of dx? Plus c. Plus c. That's an easy way to kind of remember what that is, even though technically it's not what we're, yeah, it's technically not. But that's okay. We can just pretend that it does so we don't forget that. Can I leave my answer like this? Yeah. No. No. So dividing by 5 over 2 is the same as multiplying by? 2 over 5. So I could essentially change this to 2 is going to be on top and the 5 is going to be on bottom. This integral is 2 fifths. Oh, I'm totally off the screen. I'm going to screw it over. Is 2 fifths x to the 5 halves power plus c. That would be the answer to number 1. Is that hard or easy? Aaron has a question about it, though. We simplify more by just doing 2x to the five half over 5. Uh, you can put this in the numerator. Do you care if you do that? Nope, doesn't matter to me. <coughs> it's the exact same thing. And you could put it in radical form, but I, I don't care about that either. Cody. Honestly, I don't know. I've never tried it. You go right ahead and let me know how it goes. <laughs> and Elias. Can we just write it as plus or minus C? I would much rather you just have a positive C because your textbook will honestly have a plus C the whole time through. I don't think they put plus or minus at all. 
Uh, there will be some calculator on some of the word on the word problems okay. that we have. I'll show you when we get to the end of the notes. Number two. If this was a derivative, we would have to use the quotient rule. But Mr. Promo says we're not going to learn any integral quotient rules. So instead, we have to be able to simplify this some way, shape, or form before we do anything. So I'm going to split this up. x divided by root x plus 1 divided by root x. Since the whole numerator is being divided by root x, I can split it. This divided by root x plus that divided by root x. That's a common denominator. I'm unsplitting the common denominator <coughs> with respect to x. And I'll put this in parentheses because uh, you're taking both of these with respect to x. So it's not like I'm multiplying by it, but it's next to both. And then I can simplify these things. Uh, on the first one, I have the integral of x over x to the 1 half power plus 1 over x to the 1 half power with respect to x. In this first fraction that's here, I have x to the first power over x to the 1 half power my algebra one teacher taught me that I subtract exponents, one minus a half, and simplify it. And so right below this, I'm going to write, this is the integral of x to the one half power plus. I cannot take the derivative when the variable is in the denominator. The integral. Right, thank you very much. The integral or the antiderivative when it's in the denominator. Just like before, where I would have to use the quotient rule. So there's a way to bring this up into the numerator. Has to be in the numerator, just the same as, der as it was when you were taking uh, the derivative. So this bring coming up would be x to the negative 1 half power. So uh, right here, I'm going to say keep variables in the numerator. Keep variables in the numerator. And that's just a little note to yourselves and to myself that that's what we're doing when we move that up because otherwise we would have to use the quotient rule or something to that of that nature. Now, I still haven't taken the integral yet, but now that everything's in the numerator, I can do that. What's the integral of x to the 1 half? I have to add a full whole to the 1 half. What do I get? x to the 3 halves. And what am I dividing by? 3 over 2, which is the same as? So I'll put that as 2 over 3. 2x two to the 3 halves over 3. And that's the integral of the first piece plus the integral of the next one. What I'm adding a whole to this negative 1 half, that's a negative 1 half, is x to the 1 half divided by 1 half is the same as, and then the integral of dx plus c. You're adding the c. Don't forget, don't just put c there, you gotta, you're adding the constant because it could have been anything. Any questions about number two? Then number three. What is the integral of two sine x with respect to x? This one before uh, I do this one with you. I want you to talk with the neighbor about it and see if you can figure out what the integral of 2 sine x dx is. Discuss with the neighbor. <laughs> 